Welcome, and this film clip is about how iThrive.com measures coherence. It measures heart coherence, measures breath coherence, and therefore measures emotional coherence. Hi, I'm Dan Winter again. Patrick Botti is with me, our genius for iThrive.com. And you know that I have a great history in the discovery of how heart coherence is measured. In fact, I am credited in the literature with inventing the word heart coherence because I invented mathematics for, with, for which first enabled heart coherence to be measured. And this here is the uh, iThrive screen we're going to talk about in a minute. But in terms of the history, my original invention was heart link and then heart tuner. Now on the heart tuner, we did a spectrum analysis of the EKG and we displayed that. And then my invention, my discovery, internal cardiac coherence, was how to do a second order power spectrum here to measure internal phase coherence, where the amplitude of this peak would rise if you said I love you when you were speaking the truth. It actually worked. It was a lie detector. So heart coherence was a measure was a truth detector. And Alternatively, by measuring the amplitude of one single heart HRV peak here, the HeartMath Institute calls this coherence, which is simply how high the single peak of the first order FFT of the heart rate variability is. Yes, and also how low are the other smaller peak around it. So, so the other smaller yes, peaks, yes. Uh, if they're low in relationship to the high yes. peak, they call that coherence. Heart. Yes. Which is, you know, I've criticized the way HeartMath Institute measures coherence, but there is some value in that. What we're showing here is there's some much more profound and uh, better uh, indicative and better smooth measure of measuring internal heart coherence. The problem with the heart tuner was this cost thousands of dollars and you have to put EKG electrodes and it's, it's a pain in the... So it wasn't really, a, this is not user friendly. So, <laughs> again, Patrick's genius here is bringing the second and then third order FFT to measuring coherence in iThrive.com. So basically what Patrick did, let me intro and then you explain, yeah. please. So he, Patrick's discovery was to take a third order power spectrum, which basically you take the harmonics and the analysis of the harmonics, the frequency counter of the harmonics, and then the analysis of the analysis, which is called a spectrum of a spectrum or a sepstrum. Yes, but on the HRV, so uh, mm -hmm. the, this, this uh, analysis is done on HRV, not on the raw data signal coming from the electrode uh, like you did in uh, our tuner. Right, which okay. makes this... So we have to find another way to, to, to yes. get this kind of coherence. So that, that It makes it much cheaper and easier to do. It means you can do it on your iPhone now, actually. Mm -hmm. But by, So then P Patrick took the third order FFT, third order power spectrum, of the heart rate variability here and the amplitude of that is a measure of internal coherence. You see, the third order power spectrum means it's very smooth, it's very elegant, and it, it moves in a way that tells you the average of the average, as it were. Yeah. And then what Patrick did again, which I think was genius, is he compares that to the third order power spectrum of the pressure wave, the PPG, which is related to the Mayer wave, so the, this blood pressure harmonic versus the HRV harmonic, and compares the internal coherence of those two, and then he actually displays a percent time incoherence. In fact, maybe you want to explain here. So this is single harmonic coherence indicated, the time you're incoherent out, and full spectrum coherence. And so that difference between single harmonic coherence, as in the heart math, versus full spectrum coherence measure, second and third order power spectrum, is the genius here of how to more elegantly display internal coherence. Yeah. In fact, uh, when you using the the heart mat way to anal to analyze coherence, mm -hmm. the in fact you you are using a very fixed frequency for you you briefing of a fixed frequency. So in our way uh, of analysis, we can also make make it on a make it on a single uh, briefing frequency. But we can also use it to see the, the, the cascade of the spectrum, so the coherence of the, of the, the, the breath of, of, the, of the heart rate. But also if you're not really um, briefing on a fixed heart rate, uh, on a fixed um, frequency. Uh, frequency. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that's how so what we that's originally... A, that's a, that's a, the, which is the a, difference. A, yeah, the difference yeah. which is we, we originally called that the heart math mistake. Yeah. And it was a mistake in the sense that trying to fix your heart rate with a fixed rate of breathing is actually the opposite of harmonic inclusiveness. Whereas if harmonics are inclusive, which is how you, again, measure 
immune health in heart rate variability is harmonic inclusiveness. Harmonic inclusiveness is obviously the opposite of breathing at just one frequency and a heart rate at just one frequency. And yet harmonic inclusiveness is how you get an immune system. So obviously there, need, there has to be an alternative to just breathing at one frequency. And then we originally called that the heart math mistake. Actually there's some value at breathing at that one frequency as Patrick is saying, because at point 0.1 hertz it's a very useful exercise yeah, yeah. in breathing yes, that way. It's, a, it's, it's very important to do it because it makes some resonance with uh, your sacrocrine. Your mayor wave, your and, mayor your wave and your yeah. sacrocrine. So the point 0.1 hertz breath so, is, so it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. But, but here we can also measure uh, when you have learned how, uh, how to feel and to catch your, your mayor wave, your own mayor wave, and you instead of breathing on the fixed frequency, you learn to breathe on your own Mayo wave. In other words, relax to your own your, natural your, resonance. Your, yeah. which, because you're living, so this Mayo wave is not perfectly fixed, it's turning around a fixed mm -hmm. frequency. And so you have complex so harmonics. It, so yes. if you make an analysis of only one peak, mm -hmm. which is done by Altmat, we, as living matter is turning around this thing, you will have a, a smaller result. That's right. But if if with, your natural with, frequency isn't with, that one... With our kind of analysis, as we are making the analysis of the whole cascade, is all the, the whole harmonics... The complex wave. So we can still see if there is a, a, some coherence in the whole spectrum or yes. not, but and not on a single peak. And that's what we call full spectrum coherence. Yeah which is to say harmonically rich internal phase coherence other than single harmonic coherence. And our ability to measure that differentiates us from heart math and makes this more elegant and powerful. And you can see that for yourself in the breath coherence training. And there's options for a 0.1 hertz versus caduceus breath where you get a breathing feedback cue in the eye thrive. And you can try this and see how much fun it is to learn heart coherence. Make your heart sing like a laser and the light will <laughs> go forever. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs>